what happened to Diotrephes, number one, everything you do has a record in the book of God. And on that final day, when the Lord will open the books, he will see the record of what you have done, the record of the evil you have done, the record of your backsliding. If you don't repent, he will open the books and he will also open the book of life. And whosoever was not found reaching in the book of life or be cast into the lake of fire. Let me remind you that your action may be the reason for others backsliding. Your action may be the reason for others backsliding. I pray you'll not be a promoter of backsliding. I thought somebody there would say amen. We're looking at Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 50. Jeremiah chapter 50, and I'm reading here from verse 6. Jeremiah chapter 50, verse 6. My people have been lost sheep. They are shepherds, their leaders, the, the diotrephes among them have caused them to go astray. They have turned them away on the mountains. They have gone from mountain to mountain to hill. They have forgotten their resting place. A character like that of Diotrephus, who has lost salvation, who is not planning on coming back and getting saved, who has devoted himself to denying the truth, diminishing the truth, destroying the truth, they make others backslide. Is the reason for others backsliding is the result of preeminent blindness. Preeminent blindness, just like the Pharisees, they were preeminently blind, blind to the truth. Here is the Messiah, and they were so blind they couldn't recognize the Messiah. That's why they didn't get saved. I pray none of us will be like that in Jesus' name. I will not be like that. I will not be blind. Blind in pride. Blind because of preeminence. And blind because of wanting to maintain a high profile. And he's not thinking about his own eternity. We're looking at Matthew chapter 15. Matthew chapter 15, reading from verse 13. But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father has not planted shall be rooted up. God root them up. You traverse in our church, God root them up. Verse 14, let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. And he rejected the appointed builders, builders of the faith. Builders of the families, builders on the foundation of the Lord, Diotrephes rejected them. You will not reject the appointed builders. Look at Luke chapter 10. I'm reading from verse 16. Luke chapter 10, verse 16. He that heareth you, heareth me. John, he that heareth you, Heareth me, Apostle Peter. He that heareth you, heareth me. He that heareth any appointed man of God, anointed man of God, devoted man of God, doctrinally sound man of God. He that heareth him, heareth Christ. He that despises you, despises me. And he that despises me, despises him that sent me as Diotrephes rejected, despised, belittled, pushed away. The one building the church on the sound foundation, he was rejecting the Lord. And he ruled to produce by God's. Look at those the Pharisees at the time of Jesus. Look at what they produce. I'm looking at Matthew chapter 23. Matthew chapter 23. 
We're reading from verse 15. Matthew chapter 23, verse 15. Warn to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye compass land and sea, sea and land, to make one proselyte who becomes a bygod. And when he is made, ye make him to fold more the child of hell than yourselves. Instead of leading those people they're leading into salvation, they let them into damnation. Instead of leading them in the way of truth, they let them in the way of error. Instead of leading them to a converted conscience, a converted heart, they led them to a seared conscience. Look at verse 33. Ye, serv ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, how can ye escape the damnation of hell? The, the people, they were leading, look at it, within the week, those people shouted, Hosanna to the son of David, Hosanna to the one that cometh in the name of the Lord. Before the week ran out, look at those people, those same people shouting, Hosanna, they were crucifying him, crucifying him. They had turned the minds of the people. They're so powerful for the devil, you will not be powerful for the devil. You'll be powerful for the Lord to turn the minds of people in the right direction, in the right way, in the way of truth, in Jesus' name. Resisting the truth with devilish boldness. There's some people that think they are bold, but they don't understand. There is damnable boldness. There's desirable boldness. The people who are bold to accept the truth, bold to preach the truth, bold to declare the words of eternal life, that's desirable boldness. The people who are bold to destroy the truth, to run out, cast out the preachers of the truth, that's not good boldness. That's devilish boldness. It will lead to hellfire. I pray God will deliver you from that in Jesus' name. Acts chapter 7. Acts chapter 7. I'm reading from verse 51. Acts chapter 7, verse 51. Ye stiff necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost. They were not resisting Stephen. They were resisting the Holy Ghost. And ye always, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost as your fathers did, so do ye. You will not be like that. I will not be like that. Say that I will not be like that. Second Timothy chapter 3. Second Timothy chapter 3. I will read him from verse 5. Having a form of godliness. They say go to church. Having a form of godliness. They say come to church. Having a form of godliness. They stand in the middle of the church. Bold. Aggressive. Disagreeable. Domineering. Like Diotrephes. But denying the power thereof. They don't have the power to do well. They don't have the power to do good. But they have the power to do evil from such. What does the Bible say there? What are you going to do? What should we all do? Turn away from them. Look at verse 8. In verse 8 it says, Now as Janice and Jambres was to Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the truth. Reprobate concerning the truth. And then it says, the people that wanted to receive the word of God, they cast away. They said, you're going to receive the word of salvation while I'm here. Sanctification while I'm here. And you're praying, praying, praying and consecrating while I'm here. 
and watch the same from the headquarters Jerusalem church. You're going to accept that. And they said, yes, I'm going to receive that. That's the way to heaven. That's the way to the world of life. And that's the way to paradise. Then they cast them out. Nobody will cast you out. Nobody will lock the door of heaven against you in Jesus' name. Look at the word of God. What the people did in John chapter 9, verse 34. John chapter 9, we're looking at verse 34. Those uh, Pharisees were real, terrible characters. Somebody had received sight as a miracle manifestation of the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Did you want to hear the name of Jesus? This Diotrephes was like the unsaved, carnal, worldly, unrighteous, ungodly, damnable Pharisees. Look at John chapter 9, reading from verse 34. Then answered and said, they answered and said unto him, Thou was altogether born in sins, and dost thou teach us? The man gave a simple testimony, and the man gave a clear testimony. He opened my eyes. If he were not of God, he could do nothing. Since the world began, we have never heard that a man who is a sinner opened the eyes of the blind. If this man Jesus were not of God, he could have done nothing. And so they said, are you trying to teach us? We've made up our minds. We're not going to accept Jesus. We've made up our minds. We're not going to listen to him. Are you going to convince us that Jesus is Savior? Look at the latter part of verse 34. That verse 34, what did he do? Tell me out aloud. And I cast him out. All those people, they themselves, are cast out of heaven. Give me a good amen. amen. Matthew chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 11. Matthew chapter 8, reading from verse 11. And I say unto you that many shall come from the east and west and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom, Israelites, Pharisees, Sadducees, those who cast out truth lovers, but, they, but the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. I pray that will not happen to you. Matthew chapter 25, I'm reading from verse 30. Matthew chapter 25, verse 30. And cast ye out the unprofitable servant, Diotrephes, supposed to be a servant of God, supposed to be a worker, supposed to open the door and welcome people to come and serve the Lord, supposed to preserve the truth, and supposed to encourage people in the truth, believing the truth, standing for the truth. No, he was casting them out if they were going to obey the truth. And so the Lord said, There is some profitable servant who has missed the purpose of his calling into the ministry, into the service of God. Cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness, then he says, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Look at verse 41. In verse 41, then shall he say unto them of the left hand, depart from me, ye cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Verse 46, and these shall go away into everlasting fire punishment, but the righteous into everlasting life. That's for me. Everlasting life, that will be for us in Jesus' name. 
if that's going to be for us, come back to Third John chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 11. First Third John chapter 1, reading from verse 11. Beloved, follow not that which is evil. You might see a Diotrephes around you there. Follow not Diotrephes. It's a man for evil. It's a woman for evil. It's a woman for falsehood. It's a man for falsehood. Follow not that which is evil, but that which is good. He that doeth good is of God. He that doeth evil has not seen God. Was Diotrephes doing good or doing evil? Tell me now. Evil. As he know, did he know God? According to the last sentence here, he that doeth evil has not seen God. Had he seen God? Had he got grace? Had he got salvation? Why are you going to follow somebody who has not got salvation? It's blind. Blind to the truth. Blind to righteousness. And blind to the way of peace. You will not follow evil. Verse 12, Demetrius has good report of all men and of the truth itself. Yea, and we also bear record. And ye know that our record is true. The Lord is saying, follow not that which is evil, but follow the people like Demetrius, who loves the truth, who believes the truth, who embraces the truth, who walks in the truth, who are consecrated, committed to the truth. How do we know that a person is following the truth, he embraces the truth, he loves the truth, is going to abide in the truth forever? When I see you, how do I know that you love the truth, you embrace the truth, you accept the truth, and you are devoted to the truth? When I see your family, how do I know that your family loves the truth and believes the truth and is going to abide in the truth? Number one, you are saved and honest. You are saved and honest. Anyone going to follow the truth, anyone going to abide in the truth must have the grace of God that brings salvation. And you are saved, and the salvation makes you to be honest. I pray that salvation will be visible in your life, visible in your action, visible in your consecration in Jesus' name. Number two, sanctified and holy. Sanctified and holy. We're sanctified by the truth. And somebody who is saved and sanctified by the truth, he loves that truth and he remains a holy child of God. Sanctified and holy. Have you prayed? Have you sought the Lord? Have you repented of your sin? Have you been changed and converted and transformed and saved by the saving grace of God? then you must be honest, saved and honest, sanctified and holy. Number three, spiritual and helpful. Spiritual and helpful. If you are really a lover of the truth, a person that is consecrated to the truth, a person that wants the truth to spread everywhere, the Spirit of God will control you, and the Spirit of God will guide you, and the Spirit of God will saturate you. You will be spiritual and helpful. You'll be helping people who want the truth. You'll be helping people who are praying for the truth. You'll be helping people who are searching for the truth. You will be spiritual and helpful. Are you a person that says, I'm going to be a fellow helper of the truth? I'm not going to follow the way of evil. I'm not going to follow the evil doers. Number four, you'll be sincere and hospitable. Sincere and hospitable. Look at those people. They're coming from the headquarters church and they're bringing the truth. 
and they're bringing the word, the apostle, the elder, and reaching at that thing, give it to the church. You see them coming, you stay there, you welcome them, and you are sincere, you are hospitable, you take care of them. They have not taken anything from the Gentiles as they go taking the truth to them, sincere and hospitable. Number five, you are selfless and harmless. People can feel at ease in your presence because you are harmless. You're not going to hurt anybody. Your words will not hurt and your action will not hurt and your behavior will not hurt anyone. You're selfless, sacrificially giving to other people that you will support the truth. You will uphold the truth. You are selfless and harmless. Number six, you are submissive and humble. Submissive and humble the word has come from the pulpit you're submissive and humble that word has corrected something in your life that word has corrected something in your behavior if you are a lover of the truth you'll be submissive to that word and you'll be humble that word is coming from the headquarters and it's reaching out to the hearts of the people and the Lord wants you to say that's the truth that's the truth that's the truth I accept I Brace and I hold on to the truth. You are submissive and humble. Number seven, you are steadfast and heavenly minded. You are steadfast and heavenly minded. Idiotrephes, who is supposing the truth, will not block your way. He will not block my way. I said, He will not block my way. When you are, com you are coming to church, you are coming to serve the Lord, and your eyes are upon the glory of God, upon the grace of God, and He will not stop me. Somebody there, He will not stop me. Somebody there, He will not stop you. Diotrephes will not stop, uh, stop you. Diotrephes in front and drag on at the back. And the dear devils are the side. All the same, I've decided to follow Jesus. And I will follow till the end. I will not turn back. I said I will not turn back. I said I will not turn back. And then above all, the Lord will prosper you. Will keep you in health as your soul prospers. Your soul will prosper. <laughs> Your business will prosper. Your health will prosper. Everything that is going to kind of diminish your health and your strength, the Lord will take it away in Jesus' name. <laughs> beloved, any beloved there? I'm looking for him. I'm looking for her. Beloved, where are you? I can't see you are lost in the crowd. Where are you? Stand up on your feet. Beloved, say I'm here. I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper. You will be in health as your soul prospereth. Even as, even as, even as your soul prospereth. You are there today. Get the blessing before you go. Open your mouth and tell the Lord, I'm that beloved one. I'm that cherished one. I'm that endearing one. I'm that special one. I'm that favorite of the Lord. Beloved, beloved, beloved. I pray and I wish above all things that your soul will prosper, that your work will prosper, that you'll be in health. Let heaven hear you pray. Let God hear you pray. He promises to prosper. Those who come to him and those who serve him with their whole heart, their whole strength, without looking back, they serve God sincerely and faithfully. I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper. Accept that. Believe that. Don't look at the past. Don't look at the water under the bridge. 
believe the word of God. Believe the, the promises of God. Have proper prosperity. Balanced prosperity. All around, public, uh, all around prosperity. A kind of prosperity that affects every area of your life. No side neglected. No side abandoned. Prosperity all through. Prosperity all around. Prosperity within and without. Pray that God will not allow you to have perilous prosperity that damns the soul. Prosperity that makes a person lose salvation. Prosperity that takes the Bible away from you early in the morning. Prosperity running, rushing to the place where you're going to do business and then you're forgetting the word of God. Prosperity that takes away heavenly vision. Tell the Lord to take that away. That's perilous prosperity. Have pro proportional prosperity. As your soul is prospering, then you prosper to in the work of your hand. Balanced. Complete. Desirable prosperity. Proportional prosperity. Even as your soul prospers, your soul is not prospering if you're backsliding. Your soul is not prospering if you're so weak and you are yielding to the tempter, the temptress every time. And the Lord has promised you're going to give proportional prosperity to those whose souls are prospering in Christian experiences. Moving on, moving up, moving forward, making progress. That's where proper prosperity comes in. Don't chase money at the expense of your soul. Don't chase business at the expense of heaven. Don't chase success at the expense of salvation. Keep your salvation. Don't allow the devil to take over your life. Looking for material things, proportional prosperity. Even as, even as, even as thy soul prospers. And as the Lord prospers you, even the little you have, be a blessing to others faithfully. Be faithful. Be faithful. Serve the Lord. Be faithful. Love the brethren. Be faithful. Forsake not the assembling of ourselves together. Be faithful. Believe the word. Be faithful. Accept the word of God. Be faithful. Tell the Lord, O oh Lord, by your grace, with your help, I will be faithful. That's what it requires. That's what it demands. Faithfulness. Faithfulness in little things. Faithfulness in big things. Faithfulness in the private. Faithfulness in the public. Faithfulness to God. Faithfulness to the house of God, the people of God. And bless others faithfully. Bring others forward. In their Christian experiences, help others to move forward.
forward. You cannot help others to move forward if you yourself, if you are not moving forward, if you are backward looking, if you are backsliding. You are deaf and blind to the truth. Bring others forward. Tell them to go forward. Tell them to move on. Encourage them to move on. And open the way for them to move on. Take the hindrances away so they can move on. Take the stumbling blocks away before them so they can move on. Bring others forward. Become others fellow helpers. They're lifting loads too heavy for them. Help them, assist them, support them, encourage them, give them a helping hand. Be a fellow helper of the truth. Avoid the character of Diotrephes. A depraved nature. Bring it to the cross. Let the Lord take care of the depravity. If you have the tendency to be defiant, defiantly disobedient, not caring for any authority, not caring for the truth, nail that defiance to the cross. And to that nature, their devil nature. Like a dragon, tell the Lord to take it out, nail it to the cross. That nature that's always disagreeing with the truth. Nothing is dangerous. You die in that condition. Nobody can promise you heaven. That destructive nature damps the soul. Tell the Lord. When you are saved, that evidence will be there saved and honest. Saved and honest. If you are dishonest, you are not saved. Habitually disobedient, you are not saved. Self-willed and defiant, you are not saved. Not born again. When you are saved, you'll be saved and honest, sanctified and holy. Holy in your heart. Holy in your thoughts. Holy in your behavior. Holy your character, sanctified and holy. Spiritual and helpful. You're a child of God, like Demetrius. You'll be sincere and hospitable.
you'll be selfless and harmless. Submissive and humble. Steadfast and heavenly minded. Let the Lord do the work of grace in your heart before you go home. We are fulfilled already in our lives. Father, receive our thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, we commit ourselves into your mighty hands that this word we have put in our hearts this morning, none of us will miss it anymore in Jesus' name. Lord, all round prosperity. Lord, grant unto us in Jesus' name. Spiritual prosperity. Spiritual prosperity. Salvation, holiness, and baptism in the Holy Ghost. Wrought is in our lives in Jesus' name. Lord, we are asking that as many as are backslidden already, for one thing or the other, Lord, bring them back. Oh, Lord, bring them back. Any dual trefers, my Father, I pray, you will yarn them from our midst in Jesus' name. Lord, the plan and purpose of God for us is to make heaven. We ask, O oh Lord, that we will be steadfast. We will be unmovable. Lord, we pray that in our fellowship, O oh Lord, we will help one another in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray that the glory of God will descend upon our lives. In our businesses, we will move forward. Let there be promotion in the places of work in Jesus' name. This proportional prosperity. Let it be Lord of every one of us in Jesus' name. These blessings, O oh Lord, make them permanent. Make them permanent. As we go home tonight, this morning, Lord, go with us in Jesus' name. Lord, we commit our Father and the Lord unto us, O Lord. Fill him the more. Fill him the more. So that he will give us the more in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for answering our prayers. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.